Today's adventure brings us to the corner of Fairfax Avenue and Wilshire Boulevard, Los Angeles, California. This amazing facade on this rather large museum, the Peterson Automotive Museum to be exact. Let's head over. I have been here once before, a little over a year ago, to check out the A car from Back to the Future, which has been restored and is on display inside this building. Welcome everyone, Adam is the Woo here, but I'm back for a full tour. Not just that one particular vehicle, but a detailed walkthrough of the premises. There's a lot to see here. And it's been a while since I was on site. I'm inviting you to join me, shall you? Add in the fact that they are celebrating their 25th anniversary in 2019. It's pretty exciting. I just can't get over the exterior of this place. Pretty wild. Sleek and aerodynamic in proportion. I, I think. Parking prices are as follows, if you want to make a quick mental note before arriving. And once in the structure, you will be parking next to official vehicles, which are also down here, including this Porsche with decorative backdrop. By making your way to your spot, you'll also pass this 1924 Franklin. Just chilling here right next to where you pay for parking and that little machine to the left is this screen used vehicle moon rover that was used in the prequel to alien the 2012 ridley scott film prometheus once in the lobby you are presented with these cars and the gift shop right across the way there sponsored by jaegermeister this thing gets up to 235 miles per hour Pretty fast. 1932 Ford Roadster is located just next to where the desk is to purchase tickets. Look at this teeny tiny item. Pretty much comes up to my waist. I don't even know if I could cram into that car. I'm doing the regular admission. They also have a vault tour that's 75 minutes long for an additional $23, but they do not allow filming. Press the button here. Wait for the doors to open. No, not the doors. Not the, not the doors. The gull wing doors. The doors to the elevator. Second floor. Doesn't really need an introduction if you've seen the Disney Pixar movie Cars. Lightning McQueen, and he's not the only one. Check it out back here following suit in single file line. I always like the, the eyes on the windshield. Creates a personality. And speaking of racing, inside there is the Bruce Meyer Family Gallery. Some of these are really cool looking. There's more than a few in this room, including this 1964 world record holder, a thousand horsepower. known as the belly tank, but my first impression is how how teeny and tiny the compartment where you sit is. It's like very little room. The first production Cobra, right here. Yeah, most of these not made for comfort, but for speed. Not with comfort in mind. Stepping into uh, another section of low riders and hot rods. It's pretty fancy. Just look how low down to the ground it is. If you hit a speed bump, it would not be good. Or you have to take it really slow. You have to go over it. Very minimal speed. According to the information placard in front, it says this was used in the 2003 movie, Too Fast, Too Furious, the opening scenes. It'd be hard to forget. It's pretty obvious. The Ray Brown Roadster was sold years ago, four decades later, 
forgotten about was found in 1991 in this pristine condition solar powered and if that's not beneficial enough the little archway acts as a sail for aerodynamics not aerodynamic the interesting thing about this however is the inside look at the seating arrangement the thing I'd worry about with this is if someone was driving towards you and front ended you they wouldn't crash they would just ramp up over the side the the hood is like a ramp it's so close to the ground it's like up up and away an interactive walkthrough of a Maserati facility in Italy basically all you have to do is take your finger and you get a 360 view well I'm kind of like I think I'm doing something wrong just shift it okay let's go slower all right that's bad whoa 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 now I'm looking at the at the car oh, there's an there's an employee okay that's better and you just get your own private tour and if that view is not good for you slowly I'm gonna go slowly now shift it this way and I can look in the opposite direction get the inside scoop along this line of motorcycles noticing the name on this one the crap shoot some items that belong to Robert Peterson this replica of the Olympic torch that he carried for a leg during the 1984 Olympics and this Viking helmet that he kept in his office to show his heritage a camera here on the left that he used during the early stages of Hot Rod magazine to take photos for the publication. That's him right there in the center of this wall display. Right in the middle. Took this winding staircase upward to the next level. There's just so much to see here. And multi floors. A replica of what is considered to be the first practical car, the 1886 Benz motor wagon only went 10 miles per hour which even if you had this in current day would be fine in Los Angeles because that's about as fast as you could go in rush hour traffic and that old photo in the background shows what it would have been like to drive around the streets in that day and age not referred to as a motorcycle but a car on two wheels see right there car on two wheels notice the crank on the back near the exhaust back bumper a little turn switch this kind of reminds me of Chitty Chitty Bang Bang in a way. It's not from the movie, but it's just kind of jars my memory of that film. You certainly will not blend in with this item. No dis you will not be incognito or in disguise, let's put it that way. 1957 Ford Thunderbird. Yeah, that's nice. It's real nice. I 100% would take a road trip in this. 100% One, would hit the road in this thing only one of seven built this was a street legal race car used in the james bond film you only live twice this can be seen as we all know you don't live twice at least i don't, I don't think you do check out this mural here this painting of los angeles you can see the, the cars driving down the freeway you got city hall and then we're getting into Hollywood, Capitol Records building, the Chinese theater. It's pretty cool. Oh, up here, Griffith Observatory, and that iconic sign, and below, the Hollywood Bowl. That's pretty neat right there, all along the side of that wall. Sometimes they have music playing in here, and I have to wait for the song to stop to record. And other times it's eerily quiet as it is right now you could hear basically a pin drop if a pin did drop it's, I'm not saying a pin is dropping but if a pin were to drop I would probably hear it this was used the television show Outer Limits and a Jerry Lewis film for some reason I missed what was on the bottom floor so I came all the way back down here in the 1980s, Porsche designed a few years worth of these miniature versions for children. Even had an active engine and transmission.
third floor. Take a look at some screen used movie cars now. Of course, Herbie the Love Bug. This was not in the original, but in Herbie Fully Loaded. It was modified specifically for the film 2005. The number 53 right there on the on the hood and the door used in a television series. This is the Gypsy Rose and next to that is the Plymouth Fury used in the horror film Christine. And even though there were over two dozen of these made, there were only two stunt cars and this is one of those stunt cars. The fascinating thing is they always had the windows tinted so you never knew if the car was driving itself or if the kid was in there driving. Batman sidecar attached to the cycle. Holy sidecar Batman. And I'm not just saying that on my own accord. It states that wording right down there. And from the 1989 Tim Burton, the Batmobile right there. Michael Keaton. That's pretty freaking cool. And in Batman Returns, after reading the placard, not only in the first film, but also the second one. Keeping up with that series, or at least in the same vein, the same Batman phenomenon, the dark night rises this piece of mobile machinery and then the great Gatsby which came out in 2013 you could see this vehicle just make my way down the road appeared in Iron Man 1 and 2 2008 and 2010 this 1932 Ford flathead Roadster Thelma and Louise now obviously this is not the one they drove off the cliff it is another one, but nonetheless, this could be seen in the movie. It says here that it was used primarily for the close-up shots. And sitting next to the DeLorean, Tom Selleck's 1982 Ferrari for Magna P.I. that has to, had to be customized his seat because he was tall, kind of like me, in order to fit, to fit in there. They had to adjust a few things to make it happen. Over in this case are a few items that you could use if you were polishing up and cleaning like a Brillo pad, high gloss. There's a magazine down here with Steve McQueen's cartoon image on it and a few trophies. Most items you are not allowed to touch or get into their personal space, except for a few like this Model T that you can sit behind the wheel pretend you're driving it. Even in this, I don't have a whole heck of a, a lot of legroom. Being tall has its advantages. You know, I can get things out of the cupboard easily and reach things at the grocery store on the top shelf, but sometimes, you know, airplane seats and mobiles make it a little bit difficult to change the gears. And see, I gotta move my knee to shift this. You win some, you lose some. There's advantages and disadvantages to anything, I suppose. I gotta keep rolling on. I just realized this thing's not really driving. It's just sitting still, but you can kind of pretend. Out of all these I'm gonna show you, which could you picture me most in? A? B? Or lastly, C? I think this would be the most gas efficient. So I'm hoping you choose this one because gas prices. Am I right? Now heading back down from the third floor, down to the second, down to the first, and then the lobby. This thing in the middle almost looks like a thermometer, but it has numbers on it. I'm not 100% sure what it is and what the numbers mean. Maybe there's a information placard at the bottom. This looks very, this looks like a, I mean like an alien stomach looking down the staircase.
back outside now, discovered the reason they have this particular item out here is to showcase that in a couple months, May of 2019, there's gonna be a new exhibit, imaginative automobiles used in film, television, and video games. That would probably be worth coming back to check out, basically in the section where all the Porsche paraphernalia is, will be removed. Stuff like this, well maybe not this very large item, but other items, 40 of them will be placed in that room. So basically right inside there behind, behind these windows is where it's gonna be if you're in this neck of the woods around that time frame. That's gonna do it for today. If you're new here, please subscribe. By doing so, it helps keep you in the loop up to date on future uploads here on this channel. Taking a step further, ring that notification bell. And if you enjoyed this particular episode, give it a big thumbs up. It lets me know you care. I'll see you in the next video. The vlog is over. As exiting in the parking lot, in the structure, there's a few more vehicles that probably at one point were on display. This police cycle and trailer and this little teeny tiny thing. I'm not sure about these, however. Those might be for personal use, maybe. On the roof of the fourth floor, you can get a perspective of that facade that runs the entire perimeter of the museum building. And as I pan to the left, you will see some skyscrapers off over there. Zoom in a little more. If you've ever seen the 80s film, Die Hard, Nakatomi Plaza is over there to the left. Not the far left, but pretty close to the, to the left of your screen. Yippee-ki-yay.